So our 20th was approaching and we knew we needed to do something to celebrate. Start thinking, okay, what can I do that just tops everything? You know, so I started thinking about different vacations we've had. You know, there's Hawaii, maybe we try something new like Fiji or whatever. And then I thought, man, the greatest times we've had in life have been those times when we actually serve somewhere together. And so we said, why not do that for our 20th and go somewhere crazy and let's go to East Africa. It's our honeymoon. <laughs> Okay, I, I, this ministry that we've been supporting, our friends Pat and Sue, I'd like to see it. And she agreed. We knew this wasn't going to be a trip that was, you know, mushy all about us. And I guess it would be easy to think that we were a little crazy to expose ourselves to real starvation. It's weird, you know, being in the States, sometimes you can lose some of your heart for these things. They become distant. I mean, we had the opportunity to actually feed some of these kids who were about to die. I mean, literally days away from death. To be in that environment with my wife and to see her that way on our 20 year anniversary, it was just, it was powerful. All the girls that you see behind me, there's more than 500. Each of them will have to leave tonight, this party, and um, have to go back to the red light district and work in commercial sex. Hands down, grossest place I've ever been was the red light district in, in East Africa. Just seeing these women who, gosh, they just look so sad. Literal thousands, thousands of them. And they're in these rooms that are barely big enough for a bed and they're just lined up side by side in these shacks and guys will come in and sleep with them for a dollar each and and they had their kids a lot of them had their kids under their bed while all this is going on but then i saw these pictures in, in pat's office there are these pictures of him walking some of these girls down the aisle on their wedding day and <laughs> That was just so beautiful. And I, I'll admit, I just felt like a jealousy, like, because what cooler thing could you do while you're on the earth? Like, like to think that you helped a girl out of that misery, like that hopelessness, and you introduced her to Jesus, you helped her get a job, you helped her, you know, realize what she was created for, and then she falls in love with a guy, and and, uh, and he actually treats her like a woman, and, and, and now they're gonna get married, and she looks at you and says, well, you are the one, you've been my dad, you've been the dad to me, will you walk me up the aisle? And, and to have the honor of, of handing this woman over after seeing her life change, and then give her over to a man who's actually gonna treat her with respect and take care of her and, and cherish her. I just thought, oh, I'm so jealous. In the brothels we saw the ugliness and the hopelessness and the despair, but we were able to see what the gospel can do, that there can be fruit and change and there's girls that can be taken from this place of slavery into a place of freedom. I asked Pat, I go, okay, how much does it cost for a medical clinic so we could just set up camp and care for these kids? And he had plans. They had been talking about a village where he could rescue about a thousand of these gals at a time. And I'm like, how much is that gonna cost? He goes, about five million. And, you know, my mind's just spinning and I'm talking to Lisa like, we gotta do something, we gotta devote our lives to these types of things. And I go, this book we've been writing, we were just gonna give it away to everyone for free and then we thought, no, some people can afford it. Why don't we leverage that and use that money and help build this village and we can raise five million dollars. On the one hand, we have this burden, like we need to get this message out for free really because why are we going to charge believers to be able to read something that might benefit them and push them towards Christ and then on the other hand we have this burden like but wait we've got to garner as many resources that we can to be able to fund these projects you can download the version for free for those who can't afford to buy a copy but at the same time those who can they can buy it knowing wow I'm a part of what God's doing
and we just started getting excited going, let's do this with excellence. Let's self-publish. We start recruiting filmmakers. We're getting guys that, that develop apps, all sorts of people to just jump on the team. As everyone started pitching in and wanting to do this, what was going to be just Lisa and I writing a book became this team effort where You and Me Forever was gonna be about something that was not only gonna affect a bunch of marriages, but it was the body of Christ coming together to help our brothers and sisters in another part of the world.